Good morning YouTube and the internet. A bit more progress today. Uh, we're going to be fitting the main bearings into the block it's over there. Uh, we're going to test fit them, make sure the clearances are what I calculated them to be. I have had to reorder bearings. So originally I ordered these uh, 0.025 millimeters oversize. Um, and then when I changed crankshafts, I took measurements on that and it is good for standard bearings, so I ordered a set of standards. Can't really see it because they're bubble wrapped. Uh, but before we fit those, I need to just clean up the girdle a little bit. Do the same in the block. Uh, then I've got to clean the crankshaft, uh, place it in there and, and uh, using some plastic gauge, double check that my measurements with the mic are correct. So it's just an extra step, it means assembling and disassembling an extra time, but it gives you that peace of mind and confirmation that the measurements you took were correct. So this is already pretty clean, but we just want to make sure that these surfaces have no metal on them, no dust, debris, Anything that could uh, affect the measurement that we're about to take. So. Uh, extra care on the centre one to ensure that um, the thrust bearing seat should be good as well. I'm only really worrying about these mating faces that bolt or interfere with something. Um, when I do the final assembly I'll make sure there's no uh, dirt or anything on the whole thing because obviously it goes in your engine. Anything that's sitting on here goes into the internals. Okay, that all looks pretty good. Trying to remember which set of bearings were unique. I think it's these ones that have a top and a bottom. Uh, it's these ones. The reason why you probably can't see through the plastic. These have a hole for the oil passages that are in the block. This side goes in here. So let's put them in. For the purposes of uh, using the plastic gauge and checking. Not for installation, but for doing these checks, we do this dry. Yeah, the bearings will come, have a slight oil layer or something, a protective coating on them, just wipe it off. And then here, there's a, there's a notch for this tang tab, whatever you want to call it. So, in my mind, it, this, it looks a bit skinny, so I just grabbed one of the bearings that came out of one of the engines to double check the width of the bearing. That's fine. Try and make sure they're even on the ends, otherwise if they're sticking up one way or the other, it's going to make it a bit harder to fit it torque down because then you've got to force the bearing into place and you could damage the end of it and not get the correct crush. Like that one there is a bit high on that side so push it down, runs around, seats into the middle. As long as you're very close, like field close, they'll, uh, they'll crush and center themselves against the other half. But if you're a long way out, could spell drama. <laughs> now, 
Is there a direction? Yes, there's a turn in this one here. So this is your thrust bearing. Goes on four, journal four. Shells in place. Now time to uh, do the do the block. So the procedure here is exactly the same as on the girdle. Uh, point you somewhere near where I want. The only difference is we've got the oil hole to line up, and because I've oiled the shit out of this, I've got a bit more cleaning to do. Aside from that, it's the same procedure. This is the thrust one, so it need to take special care of the sides, make sure that they're um, clean and clear as well. So I'll give this a final wipe with a clean rag, see nothing's really coming off there. Stuff will come off it, but as long as it's minimal, it means it's clean. This is going to be the first thing to be refitted to this engine block. It's going to be the first thing that's being bolted back together for the entire build. Which makes me very excited. Can you hear it in my voice? How excited I am? Because I am. It's the last step blow it down with air. I'm going to do it from back here so I don't lift any oil from the surrounding surfaces. The surrounding surfaces. on that camera falls off there so hole hole tang tang it's going to be pretty difficult to get wrong Fingers are still sore from uh, putting the assembling the pistons yesterday. Which is why I didn't start this job yesterday. I definitely would have uh, been feeling it. So what happens when you get off the tools for a few years and start working in an office? So the last one, the number four bearing. Thrust bearing. There we go. Now it's time to uh, clean the crank and drop it in. I'm fully aware you can't see anything from over there, but I don't have a better place to put the camera so to flop. Make sure my rags aren't going to get in the way. You got better hands. Now, this is dry. This assembly is dry. Do not rotate. Do not slip. Do not move. We're only doing this to check the bearing clearances before we assemble it properly. Uh, See, so yeah, it's critical that we don't move it at this point. And the crank is not staying in there. Hmm. I thought the camera was on. The girl is just sitting there, placed very carefully. Dry. I can't remember if anything I've recorded is now correctly recorded. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it down to, to set everything down into place. 
pop it off, put the plastic gauge on, pull it down and torque at the spec, pop it off again, measure the plastic gauge, and that'll tell me if my main clearances are in spec. So here's my plastic gauge. I have um, talk, pulled the girdle down, I didn't torque it all the way up. Uh, that helps to just push the bearings all into their locations down and set. And now I'll put the plastic gauge on. Now I'm going to make sure I don't put these on top of the oil hole, which is pretty much where it's lined up, unfortunately, here. Okay, here's our plastic gauge. Avoid the oil holes. Now let's put the girder back on. Manual uh, 46 to 52 newton meters torque, and that's our pattern. But I'm not going to torque it up 42 straight away, so I'm going to do it up to about 30 newton meters first and then torque it to spec. These bolts are already oiled. Okay. And I can't remember the number it was. 46 to 52. So I'm going to set this to 50 newton meters. Doing this is a reverse order of talking it up. Is it the last one? No, it's not like 14. So what we can see here is the plastic gauge. Now the first thing you can notice is it's pretty even, which is a good start. It's quite broad, but let me check my um, clearances and the cheat sheet. So the wider it is, the tighter the clearance in general. So. Main bearing oil clearance is between 0 0.02 and 0 0.047 millimeters. Uh, and this is metric on the side. So it's 0.05, so that's at the very upper edge of it. Uh, looks like it's going to be pretty close to the bottom end, which is about right. So we're looking at here, it's bigger than 0.038, but it's at least the same amount smaller than 0 0.025. So 
I'm going to call that approximately 0 0.4, 0 0.42. And smaller. The back three seem to have slightly bigger clearances. But that's not too bad. So they're between 0.4 and 0.45 ish, which is within the range of standard of 0.045 and 0 0.04 so being at the upper end of the um, clearances is a good thing in the fact that you know you just run a thicker oil and lots of high performance engines run the high clearance because you get a lot more heat in racing applications things expand more those clearances close up more so um, they're reasonably even yes the front ones are a little bit uh, bigger than the back couple but they're not not too bad at all so now I have to pull that crankshaft out and clean it so I'm just cleaning up the crank cleaning off the uh, plastic gauge and I saw something in this journal here and this is what I picked out This is steel. Now, had that not stayed in there, that's going to destroy the engine immediately. Now, that wasn't sitting up here like this gunk here. It was down inside the journal. I picked it out with a screwdriver. So, this is why the next step I'm going to do, which is to clean the crank, including internally, which is why we had the grub screws in here. That's to clean all the oil galleries out in the crankshaft. If you don't do that, you run the risk of things like that going straight into the bearing on the first start. It's game over. It's got to come apart again. So we don't want that. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the bearings in. They don't need to come out. The clearance. So yeah, 0.035 to 0.04. The book says 0.02 to. 0 0.047 so we're right in the upper end of the range it's ideal so that's great news uh, all the time I spent measuring with micrometers and shit early on pays off now when I don't have to go and order another set of bearings or try and get um, the 0 0.001 and try and half shell them and things like that that's spot on so very happy Peace out, homies. Now I'm going to clean this crank. That'll be another episode.